Greetings and welcome to this episode of The Geek Speak, episode number 21. We are filming this on Sunday, which is later than I would typically film this, so it's going to be a solo cast. And uh, we're going to talk about all things Flesh and Blood Worlds, a new set, and a lot of very interesting dynamics around, well, Flesh and Blood in general. All that and more, right now. So as of filming this, Worlds has concluded. So we kind of get to come into this with the forethought of a lot of things. One of the highlights for myself was to watch as Worlds kind of unfolded, um, being a different time zone. It's a little bit weird to get up, especially with some of the obligations that I was working on, you know, with some family uh, and other things like that. But overall, it was a pretty interesting look into, I guess for lack of a better word, just the dynamics of how different heroes work with each other. But without dwelling too much on that, we're going to cover these tabs at the top in a specific order. Don't know how long today's cast is going to be. It may even not be an hour. But this is my unaltered, I guess, look at the World Championship from a uh, connoisseur of the game from afar. On this very first page here, so I had to shut my sound off because I wasn't sure what was happening. So... On this page here, we have the World Championship Osaka uh, World Tour, where you had the live streams, the pairing, social media, you know, Team Cup, and some live blogs. So I I kind of watched a lot of this happen uh, remotely. Um, I actually, you know, got to attend on Friday night the World 5th uh, Anniversary event around where I was at. I did manage to get a hold of... Uh, one of the, the promo IRAs, because our group um, did have the 16. It did cap out. I don't know if anybody missed out. I don't think anybody missed out, to be honest. I just I know we had exactly 16, so uh, that was kind of nice. In this particular... Are you, are you going to tell... Oh my God, I guess I'm going to have... I can't... I can't run this on eco mode. All right, so the World Championship Osaka was going on, and... There were several things you could have participated remotely. So if you would have been able to go to your World Championship 5th um, Anniversary Celebration. I guess it's not World Championship. It's 5th Anniversary Celebration where you can get your Ira Scar Revenger Ninja Hero card. That's one thing that uh, was kind of exciting. There was a live stream of the event for multiple, you know, the, the first two days and the third day, which was the top cut. Um, we'll come back to that later because that was kind of an interesting dynamic to see for myself. This was all the prior information that was released about, you know, stuff. We talked about this a little bit in the last Geek Speak, so we, I'm not going to go into any of this, but there was quite a bit of information out here as far as the ins and outs, what was happening. But, you know, watching the social media, honestly, watching, like, people post things on Twitter, to be honest, or things on Blue Sky, you know, it was interesting to watch a lot of that unfold. Um, this was here just to more show that they had a couple of different options for things. So, uh, World Championship, Calling, Battle Hard, and you could dive a little deeper in there. But this was the live blog. Now, as of the filming of this, we already know the outcome. So, congratulations to the uh, the winner. Um, he was from Poland. Um, I, I think it's Greg Gregorzy Kowalski. I don't know how to say the name, so I, I apologize. But that individual... Um, did take down Worlds. Um, I knew, uh, I saw Michael Hamilton was on here. It looks like he uh, went against a Dash IO uh, and, and was knocked out uh, that first round. I kind of was surprised by that. Um, but other than that, uh, I don't have too much to say about any of the pairings or matches. I want to go back and watch this. I did not get to watch too much of it. Um, I did watch a little bit of this final match. It looked like it went down to a fatigue and with no cards in hand, it like they did like a fist bump and basically said that, you know, I win. And I'm assuming they didn't make them play it out because at that point there was nothing for that person to do. And it was just going to be a constant, like, I'm going to hit you for one or two, um, indicating that they won. So it looked like it was kind of a grind fest there toward the very end. I'm not sure that would have been something I would have personally enjoyed. But again, it is competitive. So, you know, there's there's that. That's, you know, a little bit of to each their own. Um, Battle Hardened Numbers was kind of interesting looking to see who participated you know i'm looking more for like the the mech stuff just for my understanding but 
Dash I only had a little bit uh, of representation there. Starvo uh, was was quite a bit, um, but if it was Living Legend, that makes a lot of sense, right? Briar, Starvo, Chain, super strong. I didn't think I yeah wouldn't even think that you would see the OG Dash in there, but you know, looks like that one um, was taken down by Kano. So again. Kano, go boom. Bunch of information in here. Calling was also kind of interesting if you look at some of this. Very heavily favored into like these top four or five heroes here. Um, maybe six. I'd say six or seven. Because when you, when you get to this number, right? And it dramatically drops off with Ira. Um, which again, just came out. So that was kind of interesting to see. Hi. Um... Looking at a lot of the different stuff throughout here, again, I just kind of was a little bit surprised. There was one Tech Levasin, one Azuri, one uh, one of a couple different heroes. Arachne was in there. Obviously, that number uh, will go up a lot in the future for some reasons we'll talk about later. Um, and it looks like the winner there was a Zen. Um, Zen's powerful, so I guess that makes sense. Um, the keynote kind of had a couple of pretty interesting things that... Uh, that came out and you know one of the pieces of the keynote was the announcement of the new set and then another thing that was kind of intriguing about that um keynote was they kind of for the first time uh, they, they changed the blitz format living legend status from 500 they got that all the way up to a thousand points now um but then they also did um uh, the first time ever they re-enabled a hero that went out too quickly which is zen so zen is now back um specifically in blitz so that was kind of interesting to see uh, this is that final match i was talking about uh this was the winner over here and this uh, individual had basically nothing left and you can see the stack of cards it's just at that last time it just got kind of uh, almost very grindy there toward the end so there you go there's the winning check there's only three of these This says candle hold force. You know, I kind of want to go back now and see what the other other ones uh, say. Verdance. I wonder if they're all different. I, I mean, obviously, this wouldn't have been out. So yeah, I'm guessing they're all different. Anyways, this vlog kind of continues. It's worth going through. Cosplays talked about quite a bit in here. Uh, there's some really good cosplayers. Um, you know, just looking around at some of this, there's a there's a good James White photo for you. Don't exactly know what the context of that is, but he has a frailty token, so that's pretty sweet. Obviously, you got a, a myriad of different cosplay outfits there, and it looks like you got the top eight uh, where they, they go over that. So this, you know, goes down through their deck lists. Boom to boom to boom. Talking about key things within it. This is the kind of the meta. On Saturday, we're going backwards here. You'll see that Aurora, Dash, New, um, Enigma, Viserai, they took over quite a bit of that. There was still one Dash by that day, so kind of had a little bit of hope. Conversion ratios were kind of interesting to look at, right? It looks like, a, you know, 20% of Dash is converted. Um, it, it just, you know, stuff that I'm not super familiar with, but it was kind of intriguing to see that the conversion rates were all i mean there wasn't any particular hero i don't think that kind of completely fell to the wayside learn to play happened uh they did this at gen con they've done it other ones i really want one of these two player mats that are in japanese like the ira starter uh package that would be really sweet to get one of those um don't know how hard that is to get a hold of that's going to be really complicated I did manage to get, and thank you to Tyler for doing this, I did manage to get my Crack Bobble um, graded. Um, so that is going to be an exciting reveal on the channel. I'll save that for a later point. But needless to say, that was an interesting journey, and I'm glad that that's going to happen. Uh, they, they talked about the Night at the Promo video again, which uh, that was or Night at the Armory, sorry, Night at the Armory promo video. So that was kind of an exciting um, 
video it's it's done really good the art style is really great lighting the script that they have is pretty funny the graphics is really good too so overall very good video uh, i've talked about that a little bit in the past too this was day one right there's all sorts of the uh, you know kind of heroes here you had bolton and a couple riptide just trying it out but obviously you can see that that very heavily favors some of these go fast go fast you know i don't really know what these three here represent i mean they're kind of fast but they also I believe can just kind of lock you down. Maybe fatigue might be the word. Uh, more famous players on some photos here. Some of these people look familiar. He looks familiar. I know who, you know, some of these folks are. There's a keynote talking. Uh, we're going to talk. Okay, here it is. It's down here. I knew that some of these were around. I just didn't remember where. Because one of the one of the core problems is trying to, you know, during the keynote, you can screenshot a bunch of this. And I did that. I shared it on my Twitter uh, and Blue Sky. I tried to do both as best I could. But uh, it's really hard to grab some of this information because it's kind of disparaged. It's all over the place. Um, but the roadmap here, they're going to have some scrimmage seasons. So it looks like they're going to have four scrimmage seasons now. So that's going to be kind of nice. Road to Nationals, uh, Pro Quest. So this kind of fills out the year from a product perspective. Oh, here's that change to Blitz I was talking about. The 1,000. Um, anybody will have their um, points doubled, I guess. Um, so cool, I guess. Still don't know what that's going to mean. Uh, we have the Pro Tour, London, uh, a bunch of different places they're going to have. So really, when you start looking at this, that's that's going to be a lot of things happening all over the world. Pretty big prize pool. One thing that was mentioned about this prize pool is it looks like it's the same $1.5 million, but they took out $100,000 for the player of the year. So technically, it's a smaller prize pool, but I don't know how that's going to pan out. I don't know if that, I don't think it's going to affect too much. Uh, had a pretty cool video here for that. The thing I wanted to focus on, product releases. So you had... Army Direct Origins, Jarl, which is coming out, you know, very soon, sometime this month. That is the anticipated Guardian release. But Mystery Pack Guardian got pushed back to basically Gen Con uh, in conjunction with something referred to as Smash Palace, which I don't know really what that could be. I don't think it's PvE. It'd be neat. It might be like a raid deck. I'm not really 100% sure, but it could also just be a different way to do. They talk about Crack Shuffle Play. So there could be a couple different things they could talk about with that, but I'm not really 100% sure how that is. Now, in the first half of the year, you have January, which is the first set. It says set 15 at the time. We didn't know what it was. Now we do. We'll talk about that in just a bit. And then over here, you know, you have another Armory deck in three months in a row, March, April, May. Then uh a next set in june and then another armory deck and then this so you're gonna have we have uh ko was first then you have bolton you have uh dash you have azalea you'll have yarl and you'll have march april may july We'll have nine different decks to pick from. That's an insane amount of product. If you really think about the fact we had none of these prior. But it's not insane when you think about the actual roster of the game. Which Riddler and um, Dice Commando talked about this. Dice Commando did a recent video on this as well. I have a huge spreadsheet. I'm still collating my data correctly to make sure I don't misrepresent something. But... You know, the meantime of character life, I had a really old video where I talked on it a little bit, but there there are definitely some scenarios where the number of points coming in for heroes coming out, like each of these armory decks, if they're an existing hero, cool, but if they're new heroes, right? If in set 15 we get three to four heroes, I think we kind of know right now the ballpark, you get three to four heroes here, and three to four heroes in the next set, and then technically... Mastery Guardian Pack has revealed that there will be a hero coming out in that. Well, again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. That was a, a photo spoiler somebody found on the side of the box reading the box. LSS loves to hide these Easter, egg, Easter eggs all over the place for the community to find things. So if you think about it, you got four there, four there, one here, four there. That's four, eight, twelve, thirteen, a minimum thirteen heroes probably. Or twelve to, they even call it low end ten heroes, high end fifteen heroes for the year. But they could have, in theory, in set 16, one or two reprints, possibly, right? We already know that the Monarch trilogy isn't going to happen until the end of next year. So there's kind of this, this question of, you know, is there going to be a large roster of people to choose from? And if so, that's, that, it's fine by me. Um, I 
don't know if I can keep buying all of the Blitz decks and all the Armory decks, because sooner or later there's just going to be a too many to house uh, problem. But if you want to play some of these heroes and they release specific cards in these decks that you can only get, aka Dash IO for the Mechanologist player in me, or the Jarl deck where there's going to be a brand new hero currently the only way to get them, right? If those are the only ways to get those, which, again, I'm going to make the assumption that in Mastery Pack Guardian, Jarl will also be a hero you can get there as a token, possibly, right, or something. Those, I, I believe, based on the side, are 12 booster pack instead of 24. So it's like a semi-really small supplemental, similar like Japanese Pokemon, where they're different coalition size, different pack number. Um, but yeah, that that's it's going to get real interesting. So uh, nothing nothing bad. It's all good. Uh, just kind of intriguing. So we already know more about that. We'll get into it here in just a second. Uh, they did release another archive pack. This is archive pack. Um, essentially, this is the mastery pack archive for Yarl, um, and it has the fabled uh, in it. So yeah. Yeah, this will be, I think, the third Mastery Pack. So, there's three of those. They're kind of cool, right? This is a interesting way to supplement the Japanese player base. So, I like it. Kind of nice. And now we lead into this, which we'll come back to in a second, because that is a little bit further down the road. Um, in the championship, to wrap up that, you know, they streamed it. A um, bunch of different things were kind of going on. I wanted to cover two decks that were kind of interesting that I personally was following because I'm a fan of Michael Hamilton. So I looked at his new deck and I was trying to understand what he was running. You know, you got the Arcane Lantern, a couple other things in here. Um, but it was intriguing to, to kind of watch that deck. And then this deck, the Dash IO deck, which is the deck I am working to try and go. You'll notice that there are cards in here. Uh, like Heavy Industrial Gear Shift, Heavy Industrial Power Plant. Uh, those cards came in the brand new deck. Fast and Furious from the brand new deck. High Octane, the card on the watch list. It's it's in this deck. A um, couple other ones in here. Twin Drive, not from the watch, you know, or not from that deck. But Celebarum Processor, again, brand new card. So the core of this deck is a lot of what is truly in the Dash Starter armory deck which is kind of interesting when you look at it i'd like to see what percentage of this actually is there because you got the boom grenades you got one boom grenade blue three boom grenade red obviously you got a bunch of different options in here zero to 60 technical. so I, i'm very familiar with this style of build my deck is going to be kind of similar i'm actually going through my cards on the side and i'm working out to try to uh rebuild a couple different decks that's what all this is here this is all a bunch of mech mech cards mech tech and things like that that i'm working toward so there's that Talking about the fifth anniversary, uh, this is that fifth anniversary with the Iras. Um, watched a couple people open these. There was a hidden surprise in the fifth year packs. So the fifth year pack was nothing but the Ira Scarlet Revenger. It also had a couple of these token cards that were kind of a fifth year binder type card, similar to what was in Rosetta. And the two variations of this card were the Scarlet Ira, Ira, Ira Scarlet Revenger, which was the regular version. And then there was an Ira Scarlet Revenger kind of, uh, there's a Japanese one like this, and then there's like an anime full art style one that uh, it's probably Buku Bucks, you know, more than money is is for right now. Uh, we're going to kind of come into Jarl again. We talked about Jarl, but this Jarl deck is, is coming out very, very, very soon. So I'm excited to get that. The Learn More is still not available. I was checking on it. Um, again, it comes out at the end of this month. So we're a little early, but it'll be right after Thanksgiving. So pick this up on your Black Friday. There's some marketing assets with it. You know, we kind of talked about some new cards in it. Um, it is coming in multiple languages. I, I do think that that's important to note, right? So that'll be kind of exciting. Um, and then outside of that, you know, now we're kind of on to uh, the real meat and potatoes, which is The Hunted. This is the new set that was announced. So we're going to go back to the world uh where'd it go right here so the hunted set there's a pretty sweet trailer not going to play it no sense in taking away the views from lss but the hunted video is it reminds me of like um 
I, I described it to somebody like a nomadic looking or maybe a uh, Mongolian style, you know, across the, the, the painted, the, the, the plains, you know, Siberia style kind of a thing. But it also gives me kind of some old MTG vibes of like not uh, Arthurian Legends is the new, uh, what is that called? Uh, the, the Four Horsemen set, the uh, Arabian Nights. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that, but it's just mostly the horse, the mounted. Um, I'm very excited for this, by the way. This set is phenomenal. The video is stellar. And some interesting, interesting stuff about this is a lot of people were kind of stark wrong on some of the stuff that was, you know, there. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm just going to say Alex, I think, <laughs> did a pretty good job of calling uh, what he, he thought was in here. And uh, he, he was pretty darn close to being right. So these... Um, January 17th, the world premiere, you know, the 24th, so the end of January, and really the release is at the end of January, but the box is just spot on, the pack art looks beautiful, these boxes look great, um, there's some cards in here, we'll talk about all that, I have those on the side, this is part of where the mystery kind of starts to come in, the, one of the heroes is believed to be Arachne based on another, um, uh, released uh, image that we found later uh, and and there are multitudes of these I guess dimmy looking hero kind of things these are marbles and they each look like a spider of some sort you got a black widow uh, orb weaver but what also is kind of interesting about a lot of this is I kind of made the speculation that these are almost like a class when you look at this like maybe this is like a a brute, a ninja, uh, I can say maybe a warrior over here. Then this definitely is like a mechanologist. Uh, this may be a ranger, possibly. And if you look at the total classes that exist, most of these might be there. Maybe an illusionist in some regard, somewhere in here. But that, that I don't know what this is going to be. But if there's also a statue, right? That looks like it's some sort of statue or that he this arachne person is doing something so there there's some pretty interesting stuff with that um then this is all team cup whatnot so we won't go back to that anyways we're gonna jump all the way back down here to um the hunted so now that we're in the hunted right so we have the set logo which looks pretty sweet um again there's some product sheets there was this card they first talked about with the red x now this is I'm assuming some sort of key mechanic in the uh, set itself. This is called Marked. Uh, marked looks like, you know, you're marked until your opponent hits you. Maybe being marked does something. Maybe this will be more fun for UPF. Um, in, in the reality, this may be you know, good for a one-on-one, -on -one, but maybe being marked means you have something bad happen to you or something comes out of the void in ether and tries to attack you because you're marked, right? So maybe that's something. Proclamation of Vengeance. There are a couple different cards here. We'll kind of go over these. This writing, somebody was able to decipher it. I think it was uh, Mara was able to decipher some of this and uh, was able to put some of the phrases together. I don't remember what it was. It was on Twitter, but um, said by Dromai. So there's an interesting keyword. Um, we're going to go further down here. They talked about the product release being in um, Prague. And uh, Prague's products page gave us a couple different stuff. The set is composed of, you know, kind of the standard things that we're used to seeing now. Um, it's a 265 card set. So it's not extremely big. Uh, if I look at uh, F A B R A R Y Fabraries. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is kind of compare set sizes. And I remember that if you look at card distributions and go to um, released sets, you can sort by number of cards in set. Currently, the biggest are like History Pack 1 and 2, but then if you remove those, you have Monarch at 307, and then Rosetta was 258. Now, this is 265. So this will actually be the second largest non-reprint set underneath Monarch. Only, you know, underneath that would be then Rosetta, Heavy Hitters, and Bright Lights. Uh, so the set's actually fairly large, all things considered. There's still one Fabled. There's going to be six Legendaries, 42 Majestic, 66 Rares, 130 Common, 16 Tokens, and 17 Marvels. It looks like they're going to, um, during the spoiler season for this, from what I understand, they're going to be only... Um, 
spoiling the higher majestic cards and not the common cards i i that'd be interesting don't know so uh there's also a new talent in this set we haven't talked about that but that'll come up in a bit 16 cards per pack again that's kind of the standard 24 pack four per display it is designed for all of those things now it will be in english french germany a uh, german italian japanese and spanish so you got the six languages uh still the same msrp that has not really gone up there is the UPP policy for you're not going to find these less than 100 bucks, And in the Japanese printing, it actually gives two additional cards, Valiant Dynamo and Brave Forge Bracers. And I'm assuming that's just to be able to support uh, the Warrior class, which we'll come back to that because that's kind of important. Um, German, Italian, Spanish language apparently includes English language cold foils. Other card types are localized. So that's kind of interesting. So the only languages in cold foils are going to be Japanese and English, it looks like. Um, which is actually something I totally missed in the Port the Mistvale and even Rosetta. I did not realize that, um, I don't know why, but it didn't cross my mind that if you buy Japanese cards, you'll get Japanese cold foils. So I'm going to actually try to pick up some uh, random Japanese generic, uh, if possible, you know, or just some common cold foil pieces just to have because it'd be neat um, just to have. There is something called a Blitz Deck Collection. Um, they're very similar to the Part the Mist Veil, the Rosetta, and the Around the Table. So this will be the third installment of these. You'll see here that this is the first time we're seeing the hero names, Syndra, Fang, and there are two additional heroes in here. We can assume one of them is possibly a Arachne. Maybe both. We're not quite sure just yet. There's a theory that one might be an Ira as well. But again, the box looks beautiful. Uh, the playmat that it's going to come with, I really almost wish it wouldn't have zones on it because the artwork just is that awesome. But I'm going to assume it's going to have zones, which is fine. But that is still such a beautiful piece of artwork, so top notch there. All right, moving on. We're looking at this page, which is, I believe, the hunted product release page. Now, inside of here, you got a little bit bigger photo of the box, and again... Nothing really to glean from here. You have kind of some samurai style looking or tribal. It says, let the hunt begin with sealed deck and booster draft format 16 plus, the same usual stuff, uh, 24 packs. This talking here, more the same information, set configuration. We talked about cold foils, one in 24 packs, give or take. So again, one per box-ish. Um, and then the expansion slot will be the thing they're going to continue forward with. So that's kind of nice to see. Making sure I'm still recording. Um, stated card drop readings are approximate across the entire print run. Not guaranteed. Blah, blah, blah. Those kind of things. So there's some stuff in here. You'll notice right here, this is an Arachne, the hunted preview. So he's on a sign, right? So that's something. Then we have, again, the YouTube trailer. Premiere, some different resources here, um, pre-release facts, and then a, a primer. But you can see that they have some kind of crazy army looking stuff. This reminds me of very interesting. And then heroes, right? So if we look at the heroes, um, there is there's a lot more expanded um, credit system here. So there's a lot more people working on this than I think people understand. We're looking at the heroes, here we go. We're going to talk about... Um, you know, we just got done with Rosetta. There were the four heroes. Now over here, you have this character, which may or may not even be Arachne. I'm assuming it's an Arachne, but we don't know, right? That's an assumption. It could be something completely different. But there's that, and you'll see it's on top of like a throne room, throne room, throne room. These all remind me of throne room. We got Syndra, a royal draconic ninja. So now, theoretically, there's going to be royal cards that you can have in your deck versus having the helmet, which gives you royal and I forgot to grab my Burger King hat because I have a Burger King hat and I was going to make a joke about it. And all of a sudden I'm here. I'm not getting up, but I got a Burger King hat. Damn it. I know I have it and it's fun. So we got Fang. It's a Royal Draconic Warrior. So we have a Royal Draconic and a Royal Draconic Warrior and Ninja, which means we have Chaos, which we'll come back to in a bit. And then down here we know we have Jarl. Jarl? Carl. Blizz Deck Collection very specifically talks about some stuff over here. We already covered most of that in the other one, but again, there's two missing heroes. In the logos, sometimes they hide things in here, but this just looks like you know horizontal logo. A couple of different things with um, I don't I haven't tried to retranslate what's underneath that. Um, English product sales sheet, which we'll review in a second. Key product art, box art here, Syndra and that. Now they obviously 
took away the other two at the moment. They don't have those there. So, you know, sometimes I thought they'd put some things in here. Bunch of different pack displays for different countries. Pre-release and marketing bits of information are down here. Standard stuff. And again, they did not accidentally oops and put the thing down here. I thought they would have, but they didn't. So you got Fang, Sendra. These are probably the young, right? These are the adult. So that's kind of neat to see. Now let's look at the uh, product review sheet. As we go into the hunted product review sheet, one, first and foremost, like the dagger in the hair kind of piece. Like I'm going to like throw it at Like that's just top notch. Super cool. You can see here that this kind of has like a bunch of daggers already flying out. So um, kind of have this whole red and black scheme going on. This screams you know cosplay galore right here this would be just some extremely great cosplay to, to pull off um more information we already covered they did showcase the marvels in the uh the video so you kind of can see the really fancy there's gonna be some marvels of uh these i thought this is where we would see the uh allies uh, i'm sorry not allies the mentors did not currently see that so that's that at the moment and as you go down this is the collection um, talking about a couple different other things, the pursuit of pursuit to the edge of oblivion. Now, I'm going to throw a theory out there. Because we're going to the edge of oblivion, because I saw this and I thought, with the truce map from Rosetta and some other areas, maybe this is their way, because James said the 16th set is something we've been waiting for. Maybe this is them leading us to a new zone of rape or a new area that we have not seen before. Don't know, but that'll be kind of neat. So, there's that. Now, we start talking about some of the cards. As we get into this, this is that mark card we were talking about. Look at the border. Looks pretty sweet. Now, this is number 244. Now, again, we talked earlier when we go back, if we look at the set, composition, 265 cards. So if this is number 244, there's quite a bit of cards after this. So I don't know if that's where all the tokens are going to live at the end of the set, or if maybe that's all the expansion class stuff. So we would be looking at, like, Crack Bobble is going to be a token somewhere in there. This is in there, but... Um, Kind of makes me think that there's going to be a decent number of expansion cards in this set. They don't talk about the number. They just talk about the raw number of Majestics. But with 265 minus 244, you're at like 20 cards. Now, are we going to have 20 expansion slot cards? Doubt it, but it's a thought. All right. Proclaim Vengeance. Draconic Instant, common, one pitch, red, well, I'm sorry, it's red, so it generates one resource, zero cost, no attack, no defense, mark, target opposing hero, if that hero is Arachne, gain resource, again, pointing to the fact that Arachne is probably in this set, because the idea with this set is this is right after the Emperor was killed, and these two individuals are seeking revenge, that my poor, my poor boss man, my Emperor of Graded 9 Drakai over here. I don't know why he got a 9, but he got a 9. Um, you know, they're going to go try and rescue uh, his his dead dead corpse. Just kidding. They're probably just going to go ahead and murder whoever murdered their murder man. So, yeah. But Dromai is mentioned in here. I wouldn't find it possible that they'd throw Dromai back in here. But there's, a, again, a conspiracy theory in my head that in the expansion slot, they might release the expansion hero for Dromai to come back in the game. Because there's 20 cards that are... Again, I'm just I'm ballparking here. But if there's 20 cards, you could use existing things with a new hero and add a couple of little ins and outs. Like a mini set within the set. And that makes me wonder whether or not maybe that would be their way to bring Dromai back. Again, that's just a theory. A game theory. That's 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 trademark. Can't do that. <laughs> um, Defang the dragon. Really cool art. I see skeletons here, right? This samurai individual is defeating both like uh, some sort of demon and skeletons over here. 
and you can see the artwork transcends through the whole card. See what I did there? You also see that the dragon symbol is in the back of the instant here, right? So that's a pretty sweet additional little nugget of information. This is an assassin attack action. Red pitch, zero cost, has stealth, three attack, three defense, contract. If you are contracted to hit a marked hero named Fang, oh, you are contracted to hit a marked hero named Fang. Whenever you complete this contract, draw a card. So, there you go. Next up, Extinguish the Flames. Red Zero, Stealth Contract for Sindra. Sindra. 3-3. Three, three. Again, this weird, like, I don't know what the hell this thing is. But, it does not look good for the Land of Wraith. That looks bad. That looks like a mutated mass. We're going to move on to Fealty. This is one of the Marvels. Marvels, again, being a higher tier rarity. This looks beautiful. Look at the borderless component. I mean, this this just screams like super fantastic. Now, this is 167. And this card is a Draconic Token Aura. Instant. Destroy this the next time you would play this turn... I'm sorry, destroy this. The next card you play this turn is Draconic. Period. That's pretty neat. Add Draconic subtype to something. At the beginning of your end phase, if you haven't created a fealty token or played a Draconic card this turn, destroy this. So, this looks like one. I want to know who this is. Because that is bad ass. Now over here you got Mounted Cavalry. Please tell me we are getting a Mounted... I know I understand we have Victor. But I want a Mounted, like, on a horse, straight up, like, chop your heads off, kind of, like, we're not talking, you know... I don't, I, I, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Terracotta Warrior kind of thing. I don't know. Anyways, that is what I'm looking for. You got these dragon statues in the background. I mean, this card, this, I want. I absolutely will must have this card. So this is going to be awesome. But because this goes... Well, it says Draconic Token Aura. Maybe this doesn't go in your deck. No, I don't think this goes in your deck. There is no pitch. This is a token. What am I thinking? It's still cool, though. So back over here when we talked about it, right? Um marked yep we don't we don't have anything but this is a fealty token i think it's mentioned in another section now another thing to really consider is their use of extended arts uh these these accentuate the art but keep the game text playable really really changes the look of how this is and honestly i am all for this like again this artwork here uh, just top notch again crap if i had more wall space i would just slow a bunch of this art all over my walls because it's just it's great uh who's the artist on the last one there mario tomas i mean these are just phenomenal uh anyways this is art of the dragon blood um, there might be a couple different variations of this from what i gather so this is a ninja straight ninja no talent just ninja um, so opens up to other characters that are ninja. Ira, as an example, right, can play this. When this attacks, if a if uh, when this attacks, if it's draconic, it gets go again. And the next three draconic cards you play this turn cost one less to play. Probably not uh, necessarily good in in here in Ira, but in the sense of the deck it's targeting, I can see this doing some interesting stuff because it basically reduces your ability to pay for, or play the other costs because if they cost anything and it's an order of operations kind of thing you have to play it first i like it all right we're going to talk about the world premiere in prague the calling the world premiere of the hunted in prague so in prague there's a lot of different stuff you can register they talk about a couple you know very similar to the world saying i'm not going to go over all this information because you can read it um but once you go to the prog page there was a couple different packages now i forgive me for saying this while these promos are 
chef's kiss above and beyond shoulders the event that was in Florida for Rosetta because honestly you're getting some pretty cool stuff here I don't understand why the fable package is $200 so when we click on the fable package here you get uh, the way this is, is worded I want to make sure I'm wording this right entry into the world premiere calling or battle hardened one side silver voucher two side bronze vouchers a promo pack randomly which is a or b so that's where these come in so a is the set of these four cards and b is a set of these four cards and if we kind of zoom in we can see that this is jagged edge a warrior attack reaction a warrior action aura fury stance a warrior action aura agility stance a warrior action or a power stance but these are all warrior in this whole pack pack a is all warrior we'll let the motorcycle leave now it's gone the second one is all ninja ninja attack the art of dragon blood we just talked about art of dragon claw fire and scale so again kind of this really i almost thought these two were together like when you look at the art style um but these cards will uh, we'll talk about. I think February has them up there a little bit better, so I don't have to sit here and kind of you know fudge around with that. But it's two hundred dollars just for that. Now you could technically go one step lower, right? You could get A or B, but I don't know if that's really going to be any better. But it's it's one hundred and sixty bucks. So you're still getting a lot of stuff, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, do you also get a play mat? I don't remember. Do you actually get a play mat? I think you get this play. Yeah, you get this play map. So again, the play map. Ding, ding. Like it. So the only way to get that play map looks like these two. And the difference is, in this one, you're going to get the two silver and two bronze. But I still, I got to have the play map. So that's going to be something I think I'm going to have to find a way to obtain one of the play maps. Now, this is the world premiere, The Hunted. And this is where we first saw the spoiling of Leet Speak Arachne. Or Arachne slipped through the cracks. Now, I did a lot of digging on this as much as I could before this video. I looked for patterns like all the capital letters. Do they spell something like A-L-R-R-X? Alorix. Couldn't figure that one out. Do the numbers mean something? If you add the 5, the 3, the 7, the 7, the 3, and the 4, it's 29. Doesn't really mean anything. However, this hero, one, its extended art frame that just like this ira is in my opinion the way to go because that is what you're staring at most of the game i love it i love it i love it i love it four intellect 38 health obviously this thing can do some crazy stuff it's a chaos assassin hero the first attack with self each turn gets go again that's important because the first attack with stealth each turn not your first attack. It says the first attack. Now over here, we got more promos. Look at this. One of the three promos. Tarantula Toxin. Blood Runs Deep and Long Whisker Loyalty. Which over here, this is Typanus, if I'm understanding correctly. So the Tarantula Toxin is an assassin attack reaction for zero... That's choose one or both. Target dagger gets plus three or target card defending and attack with stealth gets minus three defense. Again, allowing you to hit. Boom! And then when you hit, you turn into a tarantula. At least that's what it sounds like. Blood runs deep. Uh, draconic ninja action. You'll see again, this is the draconic ninja uh, border. This is the standard assassin border. And this, because it's a draconic ninja, uh, again, these are all reds here. This costs two. This costs one less to play for each draconic chain link you control. So if this is the uh, chain link one, chain link two, chain link three, if it's on two, three, four, five, it'll be, you know, less for that. So hopefully you can get this later and it'll be free. And if you sequence it right, when you, when this attacks a hero, each dagger you control gets, I'm sorry, each dagger you control deals one damage to them. When this attacks a hero, each dagger you control deals one damage to them 
if damage this is dealt this way, the dagger has hit destroy the daggers. This is a little confusing to me. When this attacks a hero, each dagger you control, me, I, deals one damage to them. If damage is dealt this way, the dagger has hit destroy the daggers. So, if you play this, your daggers are going bye-bye. But, this is like another way to throw X. So, like, dagger one, dagger two, and then draconic one, draconic two... Or maybe they're Draconic Daggers. Who the hell knows. And then go again. Goes through. Destroy it. The daggers get two more damage on top. I, there's got to be something. It sounds interesting. Long Whisker loyal, Loyalty. Loyal, 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 loyal if I could speak right. Loyalty is for each Draconic Chain Leak you control. Choose one. So one on the first one. Two on the second. Right? Three on the third. Four on the fourth. Target dagger gets plus two. You may attack with target dagger an additional time this turn. The next time target dagger hits a hero, mark them. Pretty cool stuff. Now that's just that one. Now you got this one over here. Battle hardened. And look at this. More kick-ass art. Like, I literally need every single one of these. And the sad part is I'm going to need three of each of them. You got all these are draconic actions. This is called a three promo pack. So that's different than one of three promo. Random. This is all three. So for 67, you get all three. That means baseline, these are $20 a card. For the Drakai, zero, zero. Zero, zero. Now, if you look at this, it says, when this attacks the Mark Hero, create a fealty token. Next one, when this attacks a marked hero, create a fealty token. When this attacks a marked hero, create a fealty token. They have the same ability. Zero, one, two. For the Drakai, for the Empire, for the Realm, right? You're going up, get it? Like the Realm is more important than the Emperor, who is more important than the Drakai. And then here, it's four attack, five attack, six attack. All right, well, now that I got the wife inside, because she needed help, uh, yeah, there's some more promos. I think the last thing we can look at here, wrapping everything out, um... Which is going to be on February, where it's the Hunted, right? This is that comprehensive list of all those cards. And um, while so far, oh, I guess it is true that some of these are majestic. So Art of the Dragon Blood is a majestic. Huh. Okay. Unknown set number. There's your Royal... Draconic Ninja, Cinderra, and Fang, and some freaking cool armor. I'm going to have to work on uh, sculpting, 3D printing, molding that. That's going to be a fun one. I don't know how you'd be able to play this. You'd have to, like, slice your body in half. But that's still pretty sweet, right? We don't have, we don't have any information on their um, hand size, which is intellect or, you know hit points, none of that. And the rest of these are all promo cards, so we do not know whether or not any of these... Uh, these look like they're commons. That's a token. So some of these, probably, maybe some rares, maybe... Uh, this looks like... I mean, this would have to be like maybe a, a... I don't know why those would be majestics. Commons, maybe? Rares? These probably got to be rares. So That is the hunted that is the new set that is the new thing i guess i can continue to keep chatting about stuff but to be honest i don't want to waste your time so with all that said i'm gonna wrap out my solo cast um just as it sits there's a new set some new heroes and some pretty interesting stuff coming down the pipeline. I guess I'll see if I can grab um, another co-host to jump back on with me for number 22. Possibly maybe Alex. That way we can chat more about some of these. Let these digest a little bit more. But I think that now you're going to be coming into the lull season after Worlds, right? This is kind of the part where most people typically kind of 
check out of the game, you know, kind of veg out. But uh, we're going to try to keep maintaining going forward because that's how it works around here. we got to keep going. So, other than that, hopefully your week is great. Uh, in the U.S., elections are coming right on up. So, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Uh, we'll see if we exist next week. Good luck to everybody. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm signing off. If you haven't been to one of your events where you can get one of the IRAs here, definitely go try to participate in those events. I believe they are mostly happening either this last weekend or they're happening during this upcoming week. Uh, but similar to most of these events, right, those uh, type of uh, events are kind of a one-time trigger. And once they're gone, they're gone. So if you can manage to get a hold of one, great. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, maybe, oh, you know what? What if Blaze is in this set? They haven't released Blaze. It's a... What is Blaze? Hold on. Blaze. Why would... It's a wizard young. No, but it's draconic. It reminds me. It looks draconic. Why would they wouldn't do that? They wouldn't know. Because this has to be Arachne. One of these, I don't remember which one specifically. One of these said it is the three talents. Which one said, uh... One of these is not like the others. One of these is not like the others. Features heroes across ninja, warrior, and assassin. So, that's, that's why I don't think we're going to see blaze but blaze would fit in perfect light it up pyro all right anyways that's everything bye that's everything bye i know bye bye bye, bye. see that looks royal oh here you want to look at some of these maybe you can add, tell me your reaction to some of the, the new heroes any of these cool no, Luna. Oh, that's called a fealty token. No, oh, Luna. So, what, what do you think of that? You like good? It's pretty. I like it. Why are you recording me? Oh, well, I'm still recording. I'm going to get Why? footage right there. Okay, so the fealty token, what do you think of that? I said it's pretty. Can I cosplay that? Can you? I think that's a woman. Mm hmm. But, I mean, but look, look at the look at the, the, the shoulder Could, pads. Yeah. I want the weapon. Are you gonna gender bend it, or are you gonna be the woman? Uh, I can gender bend it. <laughs> I, I look like Yoji though, because like Yo have you seen what Yoji looks like? Because Yoji Yoji's more my body build. I got the big belly, and the beard. <laughs> I could pull that off. I don't think I can pull off a physique like cute cute I girl. Don't know. I just want the weapon. That was a big thing. But there's <laughs> there's mounted cavalry on this, so that, that that's common. Um, this is the X that marks the spot. Mm -hmm. You're marked. Yeah. All right. Here's this one. What do you think of that? It's called Cindera. Oh, that one's cool. That's what I said. Like, look at the legs. Cindera or Cindera. 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 See, I'm sure these legs are gonna be like some unique equipment in this because oh, yeah. the joke is that like every time they show off something fancy, it's always like. <laughs> You know, that's a piece of equipment. She has a dagger in her hair, too. Mm -hmm. uh, then this. This is pretty badass. Like, I mean, molten crap pouring down from the background. Again, I really want a samurai class now that I've seen this. Because, again, they've, they've kind of spoiled this in some of the other artwork. Like, there's definitely that. But um, what do you think of that one? It's a samurai. Do you think that's considered a samurai? you think that would be samurai? I mean, it says it's a royal draconic warrior hero. This is a royal draconic ninja hero. Does that yeah. scream ninja to you? That screams ninja to me. Kind of. This one, in case I could see samurai, but they, they say warrior, so maybe this more warrior. They're all warriors. Dynasty warriors? Mm. That's that's a pun. You know, there's a game called Dynasty yes, Warriors. I know. Okay. <laughs> all right. This is another hero. How do you say the name? I have no idea. I think it's Arachne slipped through the cracks because that's... Oh, that makes sense. Okay. It's all... They call it lead speak. I think I that's what I know what, what lead speak is, but I know it from... Beep, boop, boop. There's other various ones. Like, any of these call out to you? I like these. The, well, this was pretty sweet. I love that. The um, long whisker loyalty. I just... I really like the beard. 
gives me an excuse to grow no. my beard. I just gotta get it white now. No. What about this one? This is pretty cool. This is yeah. the extended art frame, and then this one's kind of like they're building some statues, like stone here. It's pretty pretty sweet. I don't know where this is at in the world. And then this one is the. It's only six thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what happens when daylight savings chains. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing I figured it'd be cool to show you is look at the uh, look at the artwork here. Like this is the where'd it go? Look at the artwork. There's mm -hmm. two unknown heroes. Mm. I wonder if one of them's gonna be like a mounted samurai, like you know maybe a horse. I don't know. I don't think so. Mm. I don't know. Unless they bring back the emperor. Would they? Well, this is a royal. Okay, hold on. Wait. Ten foil fat, fat here. They said it's assassin. Wait, 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 wait. Too far back. Too far back. A ninja, warrior, and assassin. Okay. Ninja, warrior, and assassin. Royals in the set. Warriors in the set. Draconics in the set, but no wizard. And supposedly he's already dead, so I guess they couldn't have a set where he's there. My idea's out. Your idea's out. But, but, if they had her, Blaze, and the Emperor, in like a flashback, they could have a Draconic... Okay. Alright, I'm done. I'm out. Bye-bye.